In the age of big steel, towns like Braddock, Pennsylvania were the backbone of America's industrial might. Arsenals of the steel makers, the heart of industrial America. A beacon for thousands of immigrants looking for a better life. Steel Baron Andrew Carnegie opened his first mill here. And into the 1950s, sidewalks were packed, stores thriving. But that was then, this is now. The collapse of the U.S. steel industry left this borough in the shadow of Pittsburgh in ruins. Trains don't stop here anymore, storefronts are shuttered, homes crumbling. In fact, Braddock has fallen so far, the 2009 movie, The Road, set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, was filmed on its empty streets. What is this place, Papa? Today, 90% of the population of Braddock has left. Less than 3,000 people remain. The poverty rate here is three times the national average. There is no restaurant or ATM, no gas station or supermarket. But for those people who do remain in this small town, there is hope. And it comes in the form of a very large man. Gatorade! Woohoo, there we go. There's no Chamber of Commerce shiny spin that you can put on a community that is, has uh, endured the kind of chaos and, and upheaval that a place like Braddock has. Meet Braddock Mayor John Fetterman, six foot eight, 350 pounds. Everywhere you see something growing, there were our homes here. Come on in and, and see, you know, why we are trying so hard to save as many of these structures as we can. He's a man whose dreams for this shattered town match his mammoth figure. This is the tragic end result of what happens when a region, a town, a street, a house is you know, effectively allowed to fail. The 40-year-old Fetterman wears Braddock's past literally on his sleeves. The zip code tattooed on one arm, the dates of murders on the other. The worst days of my life, um, because these are days that uh, we uh, lost people through senseless violence. Just one look at Fetterman, and it's hard to believe he was born into a wealthy family in eastern Pennsylvania, or that he has a master's degree in public policy from Harvard. He first showed up in Braddock nine years ago doing community service. To those who ask why, why, why you're doing this? I, I would just really respond like, why not? Fetterman uh, says what he calls Braddock's malignant beauty kept him here. In 2005, he ran for mayor and won by one vote. Last year, he was re-elected in a landslide. Did you ever imagine yourself as mayor of Braddock, no, PA? No. It all evolved where every investment that I made in the community, whether it was emotional, physical, or financial, um, was rewarded, uh, it, and it made sense to continue on. His first investment in the town was his home, an old warehouse he bought for $2,000. You call this the million dollar view. Yeah, because uh, from my perspective, it doesn't get any better or more historic uh, than, than this. Yeah. Run into house grab money? His Brazilian wife, Giselle, shares his view. She came to Braddock from New Jersey three years ago on a whim after hearing about his work. He sees beauty here. Do you see beauty? Of course, absolutely. It's everywhere you look. I think, you know, um, Braddock is such a colorful place. Can Daddy have the ball? The couple has Daddy an 18-month-old son, Carl, another incentive to give Braddock a future. Daddy kiss? Can Daddy have a kiss? Daddy... <laughs> How long has this project been in the works for? Uh, wow, the, the project and the idea has been in the works now for uh, around seven years. But... Fetterman drained his 401k to buy this historic church and is now turning it into a youth center. When the last time stained glass was placed into a church and window here in Braddock, as opposed to taken out, and certainly it's gotta have been at least 50 years. So it's, it's really been a, a really rewarding undertaking. Even more rewarding when you consider he only makes $150 a month as mayor. He mainly supports himself and invests in Braddock with money from his family. His commitment has attracted a small but growing list of urban pioneers, including a company that turns vegetable oil into biodiesel fuel, and a group from Brooklyn that is transforming another old church into a new art center, a decision that has mystified residents. What do they think about you moving here? I think some of them think we're crazy. Artist Ruthie Stringer admits it has not been easy. You glad you came here? Yeah, I am, yeah. It's been tough. 
Yes, it's, it's challenging, but that's what makes it exciting. Thank you, thank you, Fetterman is excited too. Pittsburgh investors have given money to a number of his projects, including an urban farm he created to promote local produce. So we can have work to do. And Levi Strauss, the jean company, is launching a nationwide advertising campaign today featuring Braddock residents. It's also contributing more than a million dollars to help the town. All of this investment and his oversized personality have made John Fetterman somewhat of a media darling. You look like you received a dose of gamma radiation. <laughs> you're, uh, you're a big man. Yeah, well, you're a big man. Th thank, thank you for noticing. Yes. Um, You've been called America's coolest mayor. You've also been called the mayor of hell. Mm -hmm. What's right? Well, I'd say neither are. It's just a matter of doing what I'm doing. And if anyone cares, that's great, so long as it can benefit the community and the town. But longtime council president Jesse Brown disagrees. Him and I don't see eye to eye. He says Fetterman cares more about his own image than the town and that he's overstepping his authority. For some reason, he's come to Braddock, which is a predominantly Afro-American community, that he seems to want to be the, the, the white savior for this community. And I just feel different. Fetterman's challenges haven't just been with the town council. Residents have to leave for even the most basic services. And earlier this year, in a devastating blow to the town's recovery, the largest business shut down, a hospital that employed 600 workers, leaving Braddock without any health care. Go back to your design view. Still, at the local employment center, just down the street from the billowing smokestacks of Andrew Carnegie's original steel mill, there's hope. I just got a job offered. I just took it. You're <laughs> kidding me. That's so wonderful. <laughs> Town librarian Vicki Vargo says the mayor's changes have been positive. Sometimes it takes somebody new who's not from here to come in and say, geez, have you tried to do something this way or that way? And that's what he's done. And resident Tina Doucet agrees. All hope is not gone. I think this is just the beginning. I think John has played an important role and uh, putting Braddock on the map. That may be true. Keep up the good work. But Thanks John Fetterman much. refuses to set a benchmark for success. I was, I was, I was he says he just wants to be useful and for Braddock to believe it can do better. I, I, I like to think if there's nothing else that can be taken from the Braddock story, it's that no community deserves to be abandoned. No community deserves to have the back turned on it. And that there's always uh, an ability to increase or enhance the quality of life for the residents. In fact, I think it's, if anything, it's a, a moral imperative to, to, to do so.